Hello everybody, I'm Jeremy Powers, the newest presenter on the Global Cycling Network. I'm really excited to be a part of this crew. This is my presenter video. here in Western Massachusetts in the sand pit, the infamous sand pit where I have spent many, many hours being a student of the sport. And I'll tell you, this sand pit has taught me a lot about how to be humble. <laughs> Over the years, I have crashed and eaten a lot of sand and uh, dug a lot of it out of my shoes. I'm 35 years old. I've got an awesome wife, a two-year-old son, and a pretty cool Labrador retriever named Moose, who, if you follow my Instagram, you have definitely seen a lot of swimming in the local rivers and streams and having a blast with me. So for the last 15 years, I've been traveling pretty much all over the globe, racing World Cups, national level races, and pretty much everything in between. I've won some races, but as much as I would like to make my videographer run around this sand pit with me and get this whole video, we're gonna head over to my local shop. I'm gonna tell you guys more about me. We're here in my adopted hometown of Northampton, Massachusetts at our local shop, Northampton Bicycle, so I can tell you all a little bit more about who I am and where I came from. So I got into riding because I was a complete nut job when I was a kid. My mom tells me stories of crying in the shower often because of how much energy I had. She put me into basically every type of sport I could ever have played, baseball, soccer, football, traditional American sports, but the bike was the thing that I always had a love for. I would always ride to all of these practices on my bike, and really I found the individualism and the ability to just get all that energy out, the bike was, uh, was, was the thing that was for me. My favorite place to ride is probably where I call home now, which is Western Massachusetts. It's, uh, it's a pretty place, small town feel, but has a lot of beautiful roads, no traffic, and really just a great cycling community. So I'd have to say Western Massachusetts is my favorite place to ride. All of the tricks and skills and different things that I've been doing over the years, I think it just been from, you know, from when you're a kid and you're ripping around. I always used to ride my road bike off-road, then I'd ride my cycle cross bike when I would be out on the mountain bikes with other friends. So I think for me, all those tricks and things like that, jumping over stuff was just because I was a young kid that had a lot of energy that was super bored and I would practice and practice and practice. Can I wheelie? Can I ride backwards? Can I jump over this thing? Can I bunny hop? Can I ride my bike on my trampoline? Whatever it was. Like, I always was trying weird stuff and so I think um, obviously the technical skills are probably a little bit of maybe genetics, I don't know, practice, but um, probably just being exposed to all that stuff when I was younger and kind of loving like mountain bike downhill racing and trick videos and all that stuff when I was growing up I think had a lot of influence on that but I, I find it fun and um, it's definitely a cool thing to have in your back pocket when you're, you know, trying to make a cool video. Outside of riding these days is a lot of family stuff. I like to hang with my family, I like to hang with my friends, I love going out to eat, cooking, um, you know, kind of normal stuff. Um, I would say that travel is obviously a big part of my life, especially here at GCN and even before as a pro. Anytime I get to take my family or friends with me, I'm really psyched. Uh, I love music, so anytime I get to listen to music, um, I like listening, podcasts, books on tape, not a big reader, so anything I can listen to and, and absorb from is something that I'm into. And uh, yeah, generally just probably my number one thing at this point is spending time with my family and trying to uh, not be as crazy as I was when I was a full-time rider. 
The Jam Fund is a nonprofit that I started with my two good friends, Alec and Makunda, and Jam is just the acronym, so it's Jeremy, Alec, and Makunda. At this time, Jam Fund has a elite cyclocross team, which has turned a handful of riders into professionals that still live in our little area of Massachusetts and make a living from the sport and contribute to it in a lot of different ways. Um, but we also have events that support Jam Fund that we raise funds through by design. We did a lot of video over the years. Uh, I would say probably the project that everyone knows really well if they followed cyclocross would be the Behind the Barriers and then Behind the Barriers TV. Behind the Barriers was a day in the life show that I started in 2010 and followed my life pretty much all over the world and yeah, kind of showed all the good, all the bad, um, the, the, the everything in between. And uh, we had a lot of fun with it. I feel like it's something cool that in, 40 years I'll be able to look back on and maybe my kids will be able to look back on and, and see and, uh, and know a lot about who I was as a person and what I, uh, yeah, what mattered to me and what I was doing with my life. So technically I turned pro as a mountain biker uh, my first year out of the junior. So that would have been 2001 or 2002. Um, I didn't race a lot because I got really sick with mono. I guess the Europeans call it Epstein-Barr. Anyway, I got really sick and I didn't end up racing for like six months. But after that, I did a year on the road because all of my friends where I moved to in Massachusetts, which is where I call home now, were riding on the road. I went from basically a beginner road rider all the way up to like a category two rider. And then that year I got signed by Jelly Belly. And so in 2004, I started my season as a pro and I was 20 years old. And then stuck with Jelly Belly for 10 years and raced cyclocross at the same time. And now I guess I retired in 2019. So technically I was a pro for 19 years. Getting signed to a pro road team at that time was quite a bit different than it is nowadays. There were not as many programs and it was a division three professional team, I think was looked at a little bit differently because there weren't so many big teams in cycling. So the division three teams, which is what Jelly Belly was, was part of a lot of the bigger races, especially the ones that happened in North America. Um, so we got to do like tour of Georgia, tour of Missouri, tour of California, tour of Alberta, um, basically any of the big tours that were going on in North America, Jelly Belly was able to be a part of, and then I was able to do as races. So, you know, lining up with uh, the biggest riders at that time was, was completely commonplace, and that was super fun and a great experience for me. And I felt like I never, I never needed to aspire to go to the Tour de France or to the bigger races, because that wasn't something that I was interested in. I was really focused on cyclocross, and the road riding was, for me, something that I loved doing and being a part of, like the camaraderie of the team and hanging out with all my friends and kind of working towards a goal as a crew was, was something that I valued and missed when I had to be so individualized as a cyclocross rider. So racing on the road for me and turning pro in 2004, quite a bit a different thing, um, but something that I'm super grateful for and the opportunities that it opened for me. And I think that if I look back at it all, I say to myself, wow, that was a really special opportunity. And like I said, I'm just super grateful for it. Man, I rode for a ton of teams over my, uh, over my years as a pro and before it too. Um, I was on a great junior mountain bike team when I was young called Team Devo. I was on Jelly Belly. I was on Cannondale Cyclocross World, Rafa and Focus, uh, and then my own team, Aspire Racing. So I was on quite a few teams with a lot of different jersey iterations, which we uh, <clears throat> had to try on a couple of earlier. <laughs> so yeah, I think, um, I think it's, it's definitely the amount of teams and the amount of organizations that I got to work with was super fun and I, you know, I have to say that I learned a lot from all of them. The most notable results that I had would have to be my four national championship titles from 2012, 2014, 2015, and 2016, and those were in cyclocross. I was also Pan American national champion in 2015 in cyclocross. I did some pretty good World Cups. I was, uh, I think my best place was sixth place in Las Vegas. I definitely had a seventh, an eighth, a ninth, a tenth, <laughs> and pretty much all the way up through there. Um, I'm also really proud of a ninth place overall when I raced the entire World Cup circuit in, I think it was 2015 season. Um, I was able to race the entire World Cup and my wife traveled with me and I was able to be inside the top 10, which I was really proud of because a uh, big accomplishment of consistency throughout the year. So. I think those would probably be my personal favorites. There were a lot of victories in there. Um, 
Gloucester, Massachusetts, I was able to win that 10 times, which is super cool because it's my favorite or one of my favorite races that I ever got to do. And um, I guess, yeah, they all meant something to me. I remember each of them for a different reason, but those would have to be my, um, probably my favorites. Man, the hardest race that I remember has to be the tour of Qinghai Lakes in the Tibetan Highlands of China. I think the race still goes on, but for me, um, I call that a life race, probably the only race that I um, literally was glad to be done with. All the other races I really looked forward to the next day when I got up, but that race was I think we were at 11,200 feet is sort of like kind of where we get to the first stage, maybe 8,000 feet. Then it goes up to 11,000 and goes around this lake. And I remember some of the stages, the profiles were like this. So from 11,000 here, you climbed like 14 or 15,000 and then you go down. And I remember one time where I'm on top of 15,000 feet and I said to the, uh, it's like the team doctor who was with us, I said, oh, my helmet is tight on my head. And she told me that that was because my brain was quite possibly swelling from the high altitude. I don't think that I'm gonna miss the racing. Um, having done so many races, uh, some days, some years I did 90 race days a year when I was combining road and cyclocross. So I think, uh, I don't think I'm gonna miss the racing. I will definitely miss the people at the races, but with GCN, I'm gonna be able to be at a lot of them and still interacting with them. Well, the reason retire has a lot of layers to it, uh, but I really felt like it was something that I thought about for the last two years. And uh, we had my son two years ago. That was a big driving factor towards wanting to be around more. So life changes, the circumstances change, and being able to give 100% of myself to the sport, which is what I felt like I had to do to be able to compete at the highest level was something that I didn't think that I could do any longer. And, they started to feel like sacrifices. So I think once the sport starts to feel like it's a sacrifice, then you have to start to kind of check up and see like, okay, is this something that I should keep doing? Thank you for hanging out with us, learning a little bit more about me and watching my presenter video. I'm hoping that I get to see you guys all at the races and out there and on your TV screens. Cheers.